What's up and welcome to the 600 and something something day making song bringer. Today I'm going to work on some music. There are three tracks so far out of 24 that are still yet to be made procedural. So I'm going to be doing that. Like level 5, I think, which is the Acid Dungeon. Level 7, which is the Fire Dungeon. And level T, which is the Tower. Those still need to be made procedural, so their melodies will get interesting, depending on your world seed. Oh, so yeah, this is number 603. Salad, what's up, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, and you know, at like a conference or an expo or a festival or whatever, you're always going to have more people on the cell phone towers. So sometimes I think that I could have live stream. Boogie, what's up? I tried to live stream over my iPhone tether and it didn't work. It was kind of funny to try though. I had I had the whole like stream set to be like only 240 pixels tall or something like that. Like it was encoding the smallest video I could possibly muster. But still it just went straight to red, drop frames, and it died. But it was still a fun weekend. It was cool. Lots of people played Songbringer. I gave away a whole box of t-shirts. That was pretty neat. So anybody that could beat a boss got to got a t-shirt. And um, a, a lot of people beat bosses. It was a good motivator. <laughs> yeah, it was only one pixel, but it had audio. Oh, man. It was funny. How you guys been? What's up? Which song to start with? Level five, it, I think is Acid Dungeon. That one's kind of fun. Let's do that one first. Level T is gonna be pretty mathematical. Level seven is gonna be sort of subliminal. I'm thinking level five is a good one to do on the stream. Oh, right, class started up. That's right, people are going back to school here too. So how's it been, man? How's uh how's your how was your first week of school? Let's see if we got audio at the right levels. La 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 la. I think, I think that's okay, right? Or should I turn that down? Pretty good so far? Cool. Oh, game dev course? Sweet. Nice, a game dev course? That's so rad. Oh, it's not that in-depth though? Damn. Moth Teeth, what's up, man? That's good to hear. Hopefully they can provide some like uh, sort of like optional challenges or something so you guys can, you know, even though it's not that in-depth, you can still do something on your own, like on your own level. Okay, so we're going to be taking this track and making it super doper. Okay, so that's level five. I don't even know if I've created level fives. No, I guess I haven't created its export one. So I take the, when I first wrote all this music, um, I wrote three different versions of each like area type. And then 
Um, lately, I've been taking them and putting them into one track so that it can become procedural. Oh, I did? I did start this already? Level five. Oh, nothing like that? You'll definitely get an easy A in that one. Oh, dude, so before this, I was just watching Starcade. Have you guys seen that? Starcade on, oh, what's it? What's that channel? This shit is hilarious. Shout Factory TV. Yeah, it's a Twitch channel called Shout Factory TV. And they're playing these 80s retro, um, this 80s retro video game show called Starcade, where it like pits two contestants against each other's knowledge of video games from like the early 1980s we're talking about. Um, and, uh, and, and also their, their skill at playing arcade games also from very early 1980s. So it's like, and, and then it's got all these like cheesy announcer voices and, oh, it's, it's so freaking classically funny. I wish they would put the commercials on it though. That would make it even better. All right, so what, I already did this? Okay, I guess I've got it rendered out to, oh, right, right, okay. I did kind of make this, I already, I already worked on this a little bit. So the trick is gonna be taking, taking this track that's playing here, like there's the melody part. There's the drums. I want to take the drums and make them longer, and then they take the melody and make it um, make it more procedural, so that some of the notes that are playing in there can be chosen at, at runtime based on the world seed and the dungeon number. Okay. So that means taking the there's a bass line. notes so that's a C and that's an A da, do, 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 da. and this is probably also a C oh let's see let's fold all this oh this is a C and a D this is a C and an A what's this one how's this one sound wait what How is it achieving that sound? That's crazy. It's like a C, D. It sounds like it's playing C, D, C, D, C, D. Oh, is it an echo? What the hell did I put on this? Not, is there no echo? What? Is there echo in the massive? No, it's off. Yeah, yeah. You send it to a streamer? Yeah, right on, man. Thank you. Appreciate that so much. Yeah, right on. High five, dude. Is there a high five emoticon? What's the high five? How do you how do you high five somebody? I really want to high five you in emoticon right now. Shoot, I'm looking it up. Is there... Oh, it's just no... Okay, alright, alright. 
But isn't there an actual emoticon for it? There's no... It does, it does. Nice, man. Yeah, sweet. Cool. I can't wait to see some streams from some speedrunners. I'm, I'm going to be freaking thrilled to watch those. I'll be like, oh my god, look, they just broke it. They broke the game. Yeah, break it. PC Warrior. Are these all of them? Wow, this is this is trippy. I don't know. How, wait, 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 wait. What if all these were D's? Oh my God! It's got to be some kind of random. Is there a random on this? There's no random. How is it like? It's like it's jumping up an octave or something. And it's not even. What's this? No? Oh, it could be one or two. Oops. What was it? Shazzle. I messed that up. Yeah, Friday's the big day! Songbringer's getting released on Friday! I'm excited. I'm excited to finally put this damn thing out. It was cool seeing play people play the game this weekend too. It's really nice to um like uh I don't know, get one last little impression of watching people play the game live was pretty interesting for me, you know? It was like, okay, cool. Really since cuz people played it a lot at PAX, you know, people played it at demos and things like that. And um, GDC and E3, I've watched a lot of people play Songbringer, and so it's it's good to have, to have some verification that a lot of the stuff that used to be problems are not no longer problems for players. It's like, okay, cool, that got smoothed out. People are having an easier time here at the very beginning, stuff like that. It's like a smoother experience now. Yeah, and that's and that's also how I feel about the state of the game. Totally. Like, people, I really feel like I'm confident about it, you know? I'm, I'm confident that it's it's about as good as it's going to get, you know what I mean? I can't really make it much better. Other than trying to improve, you know, I can still keep on improving the atmosphere a little bit, um, improving the musical elements. Rocket Bunny! What's up, buddy? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I feel really confident and excited about the release. I'm good, man. I'm really good. How about you? What's new, man? What are you? Are you back at school yet? You still in Portland? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I highly recommend um, working on your game enough until you're until you're like, well, shit. It's hard because I feel like I could still keep creating stuff. With this game but yeah it's t entirely possible to not feel that way when you're when you're going into release so i'm glad that i am damn i'm thankful for that what's up red saint oh day after tomorrow that's right oregon starts like later i should know that i'm from oregon okay i'm baffled by my own baseline i can't figure out why it's playing these notes You bought some MIDI controllers? Sweet. What kind? Nice, man. You just got one of them. What kind of MIDI controller is it? See, this one... Hold on. Yeah, 
Yeah, that one plays the right notes. But this one plays... Oh, I ruined it. Gotta reopen this. Huh, this first baseline track is important because if I'm gonna make this procedural, basically what I gotta do is take all these notes and make them all A and then all B and then all C, you know, render them all out 12 times so that they can be randomly combined, or not randomly, but like procedurally combined at, at runtime into some cohesive melody. A launch pad, huh? Sweet, man. And a mixer, too. Cool. The release day is Friday, man. Friday. I'm actually releasing it, well, Friday morning, 1 a.m. My time. That's Pacific time. So, yeah, it'll be, it'll be available on Steam at 1 a.m. Friday morning. Hype Squad. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty hyped actually to release it. I'm just excited to get it to just finally kind of be done with it at this point, you know? There's still more to do. There'll be updates and stuff like that. But, you know, I'll be keep on making Songbringer the rest of the year if possible. But, like, um, now it's finally at the release stage. It's like, sweet. Yes, now we can just, like, finally share this whole experience called Songbringer. Yeah, it's so close. It's so close. That was an interesting thing this weekend. So I was at this, um, I was at this, uh, you could call it an expo, you could call it a festival, sort of. It's called Mag West. It's like Mag Fest on the east coast of the United States, but it's actually um, Mag West. So it took place here on the west coast in Santa Clara, California, which is like San Jose Bay Area. And it was pretty cool. Like, there, they had this whole arcade room entire room of console games, arcade games, pinball machines, tournaments for old, like all the super rad. I saw this one tournament where they did um, uh, Ninja Gaiden. They played Ninja Gaiden or Gaiden, whatever you call it. That was super sweet seeing that. And then on top of that, they had like a whole huge like stage where they had lots of artists playing music. Like we're talking from, you know, 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. They're having just like artists after artists, like all these people playing huge live sets of their music. And a lot of it was video game inspired type music. So it was a really, really sweet festival. You can get your ass kicked, right? It's a hard game. I realized that watching that at the tournament, like it's difficult even for people that are speedrunners. Yeah, it was fun. It was super fun. And then on top of that, there was like, you know, the pool area. And also Crunchyroll was having their expo there that day too. Um, the, I mean, that weekend. So yeah, Crunchyroll and MagWest were kind of together. And you could even get, some people had badges for both of them. And you can go to all of Crunchyroll's anime stuff and go to MagWest and see music or games. So it was a, it was a cool it was a fun weekend. Um, I was kind of excited just to stay in a hotel. I'm like, whoa, hotel room. Wow, this is so neat. Wow, there's a pool. Whoa, there's elevators. You know, it's kind of special. You don't, I don't normally get to do that, so it's kind of exciting. Okay, this one I totally understand, this bass line here. This one, the sandy noise. Yeah, this is just like a sweeping noise. That's both playing. This is oh, this might be the key of C actually. <laughs> yes, right. Oh my god. Whoops. That, oh. Oh, okay. There's no extra note there. Okay, this is not going to be too hard actually to make procedural. 
There's a lot of tracks. Let's fold all these. It's A, C, it's probably A, C, D. Yeah, there's a lot of A, C's, and D's, which means that really all that needs to be done is to move them all to the A. Yeah, I use I use Massive. I don't use Serum, um, but that's not to say that Serum is. I don't I don't have any idea about Serum. It might be super duper awesome. It might be better than Massive. I'm just like used to Massive at this point, so I kind of understand it. And it's like it's tricky to like to get a Massive, you know, like all the way you want it, like. To get comp, you got to get competent at some synthesizer, right? And I just became competent with this one, and I haven't switched to anything else yet. And it's also expensive, you know. Like this is this was cost like three hundred bucks about to get massive. And so, how much is Serum, by the way? Serum's, I imagine it's similar. Anyways, I'm just sticking with what I know for now. Okay, so I'm going to take all these, I'm going to keep these actually unfolded first. And let me just verify one thing. I'm using the, the suffix E here for this, like level 5E, level 3E. I think those are, yeah, these are the ones I use for export for, yeah, okay. So I'm basically going to be overriding this file with making it for all procedural. So, is there anything I can do to simplify this track before I do all that? Because what's going to happen is I'm going to take all of these sound elements here and copy them all 12 more times. And so this project file is going to get huge really quick. So, if I can do anything to simplify any of this sound right now, I really should do it before I go duplicating everything. Um, well, one thing I could do, oh yeah, the first thing to do is combine all the tracks into one thing so I can swiftly go and move the notes. So it's cons I'll actually, I should just consolidate everything. Got the kick, got the snare. Oh, this hat is a sample. Damn, I think I should have converted that. I could convert all this into samples. Oh, I even did. I started doing it. Jonah19, what's up, man? Serum's 190, all right. Yeah, release hype. Yeah. Yeah, man. How you been? What's new with you, Jonah? I'm just going to do the melody part first. Yeah, actually, the melody first is a good idea because... The drums can be their own loops. Yeah, the drums are their own loops, so I gotta, yeah. Okay, okay, I think this isn't too hard. If I just take this and... unfold it. We're gonna be moving all these notes to the A. This still should sound out as it did. Kind of sounds a little scratchy because you're hearing it um, sometimes when the CPU is being all eaten up by having lots of stuff running, which is basically just that I'm running the stream streaming software and Ableton at the same time. Sounds a little scratchy, but still sounds a while it did. So what I'm gonna do next is copy all this multiple times. We'll call this one nothing actually. All these, just blank out all that. So I'm gonna take the top one and give it a note so it's like easy to recognize which note this whole section is. <clears throat> okay, 
Okay, so this should be ready for duplication now. Start pasting. Oh, actually, this is a good moment to check it in so far. Level 5E. Yeah. Whoops, not that. It commit raw song ringer. There we go. Okay, so that's committed. So now I can go duplicate all this stuff. A, B, C. Oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. I'm getting ahead of myself. First of all, all of this needs to be changed to be A. Every one of these nodes this should be an A of some sort. It's a B, it's a C. Oh. Okay, now it's going to get a little more complicated because I'm going to have to take some of these tracks and make them multiple tracks because this actually has a D, a C, an A. Yeah, so that's all three of the notes that are going to be used. So each one of these individual tracks is going to become up to three more tracks and then all, all of those will be rendered 12 times each. So it'll be like 36 different files for this song in order to make it procedural and flexible so that it can use three different notes but chosen like deterministically at ran at runtime. So this D needs to be its own track, the C does and so does that. So let's name it something a little more descriptive before this gets all broken apart. Yeah, this is going to be quite a big file. Let's get started. Yeah, this I you know, I'm kind of is the baseline. I almost think of this as the low frog, and this is the high frog, and this is sand. This one. That's just a high frog. That's still the sand. Okay, that's good. At least this one only has two tracks. It's simpler. Yeah, that is like a nice little whistly noise. Uh, that's definitely one of the lower frogs. Okay, those have some more descriptive names. The low frog is going to need to be done three times. Oh, that's a bad idea. Okay. Oh, yo, what's up? Been good? Busy with work? Yeah. Sweet, man. Nice, yeah. Cool. I won't be working on any spoiler stuff this week, I don't think. Okay, let me undo this step. Yeah, back to there. Okay, so I just usually that so I can keep this volume automation.
There. All right. So now I can delete the D's and C's. from that one and then delete the A's and D's from that one and then just delete the A's and C's so that's D's that's A C and D Okay, so that process I need to repeat for every one of these following tracks. High Frog, how many notes is this? This only has, wait, wait, wait. It says all three notes. Okay, it seems to be done three times. So first note will be A, second note will be C, third note is D. Alright, that's A, C, and D. Cool. The last one for this track is sand, and sand is every all C. Yes! I don't have to change this one. Okay, so I'm going to continue this process for the rest of these tracks, and then I'm going to go back through all of them and move them to the A's. Actually, let's just make that part of the process. That's A already. That one's A now. Oh, they can't be folded either. they got to be ready for this little export trick. It's a script I wrote to make all these ready for export. A, there we go, A. All right, and sand is only one note. So that's just gonna go down to A. Now these high frogs are probably all three, yeah. These need to be tripled up. C. That's a C. Oh, I messed all this up. Okay. This last one is a C. You gotta remember that. No D's or C's. All right, now we're down to 
sand. This one also is a C. And the whistle. The whistle rhythm. Also has all three notes. This is kind of the melody anyway, so it's good that it has all three notes here. A, C, D. All right, unfold. Oh, figure almost done. Oh, yeah, it's the last one. Now it's already an A. Wow, it's already done. Sweet. Okay, so let's verify. This is all good. All of these should be the letter A. That's A. Oops. Yep. 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 Whoops. Oh cool. I found one error. These are D's. That needs to be an A. Good thing I checked. Okay. So we're ready for the trick part of it now. Now it should be checked in again. First, though, make sure this sounds cohesive. Even after I've changed all of these notes down to be A's, does it still work? Cool. Yeah, it's working nicely. So it sounds very monotone because it is it's only one one note it's playing here but when you take this track 
and you choose a note at random based on the key of the base, on, which is also based on the world C and the dungeon number, then it starts to sound cool because this might be a C and that might be an A and that might be a D in some key. And then, you know, same thing here. And then, it, and then that can just be very, and it gives a lot of variety to the music. So now that that's one's ready, I think we're ready to duplicate now. Let's get this all copied. This is B. C. C sharp. E. Oh, whoops. Oh my god. Are these going to be okay to. Oops. I messed up already. Damn. Okay, so once you've zoomed out this far, it needs to be a bar that can easily be moved to. So if I press the left and right arrow keys, I should be able to line up on it. This is just also to get my script working right. Okay, we lost all that timeline, but this should be all that needs to be copied. And I think 581, if, as long as we're starting on these numbers, I think it's okay. A, A sharp, B. D. F. D sharp. Okay. Now, is it still working? Uh oh. Son of a. Nope. Didn't work. But this time I'm going to correct it by moving everything. Uh, Got to make these tracks small, make this easier. There we go. Okay, so all this. Oh, good. It fits on one screen, actually. This needs to be there. So if you're just tuning into this stream or watching this on YouTube, what I'm doing now is I'm taking a song and prepping it to be procedural. This is very time consuming to take a song and basically render out all of its pieces into 12 different versions so that um, it's ready for a, a runtime. At runtime, the game can make this melody procedural. The melody will be a little bit different depending on your world seed and your dungeon number. I've gotten this done for. Um, Seven out of ten of the dungeons so far. And so this is the last three. I'm hoping to get this done by release. By version 1.0, which will come out this Friday. Actually, I'll probably have it finished by Wednesday night and release to Steam to anybody that's on the beta. But yeah, by version 1.0, I'd like to have all of the tracks for the dungeons procedural. They've been refined recently. I've taken them and made them better up to my current iteration. But now, um, yeah, I'd like to finish this up and make these last three tracks procedural. So here's one of them. And now it's almost done, even. Well, not quite. I'll basically have to get this all prepped. And then i got to run this script to, to render them all out. And then i got to throw it all in FMOD and make sure that works. And then, as long as there's no problems, it's done. 
Yeah, that's all I was just talking about there, how to make a procedural. Basically, it just takes every little bit of these songs and makes them... No, it's... Uh, Binding of Isaac is a different kind of procedural. Binding of Isaac is a... Uh, it's like procedurally... kind of. It's more like stitching together handmade rooms at runtime. Um... Songbringer's Dungeon Generation is a different thing. It uses algorithms entirely. So, um, but this is this is totally different here. This is about how making the music procedural, and that's just that it chooses your a key for each one of the songs at runtime based on the world seed and the dungeon number, and then it in and then it chooses up to four different notes in that key and uses different versions of the track. So check this out. There's this. Right, uh, right, imagine that 12 different times. And see, there's this one that's just playing one note occasionally. That's, that will also have its own note at runtime. So that's how it becomes procedural. So that's A sharp. B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp. E, F, F sharp. G, G sharp. Okay, now, I've got two lovely scripts written in Lua for Hammerspoon, this awesome tool for basically writing code that you can trigger and run. It just can kind of do control anything in your OS, at least in Mac. Um, and it's um, A command. Uh, that's it, actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the number of bars this is the thing that has to be customized. This needs to be three because this is going to be one, two, three to get to each next one of the next tracks or notes. Okay, and then the next one here that's able to. Oh no, we want this one. Able to note increase. There it is. And this one, I need to count up how many tracks there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eighteen. Eighteen. Eighteen notes or tracks to change, and the first time we're going to do a note offset of one, and that should reload Hammer Spoon. So I can run this little script here, which basically just executes some keyboard commands while Ableton is ready or is foreground. All right, so we're gonna be watching it, watching this script work. I'm gonna be, we want to be in A sharp, be able to press up and down, and put the cursor over here so we can see what notes it's changing, and then run the script, which is command. I think it's command up. There we go. Okay, A sharp, A sharp. A sharp. All those should be saying A sharp. I'm looking at the pitch in the very bottom. There's like a bottom status bar for Ableton and it has the pitch. So I'm watching all these to go to A sharp just to make sure it's doing it right. It's nice verification. So I'm going to keep that process working here for each one of these notes. This one's going to become a B by stepping up two notes. 
wait for the config to load. Make sure I can press up and down though. Oh, damn, what happened there? Up, down. Oh, I gotta press up a bunch. All right. What happened? Oh man, what'd I do? There it goes. So obviously this process takes a while. But having this script in place makes the the human error part of it a lot less of a factor. I used to have to do all this by hand and then man, it was heinous having to check all that work and make sure it didn't mess up along the way. You don't want to have a bum note in this. Alright, they're going up to C sharp this time, which matches the header up there, so I can just quickly check all these C sharps are becoming C sharps. So it's getting close to the end of summer. It's been kind of a weird August here in California, at least in Oakland. So we had a lot of cold days in August. Felt like fall already. Hey, winner! Do not want. Sit. Return to sender. There we go. I can I can switch windows now. I had to let that thing run. It was odd, yeah, it was cool summer. Yeah.
Now we're making some E's. Oh, you know what? I got to admit, I'm sad I'm not at Burning Man. All my friends are at Burning Man right now, it seems like. I can't go to Burning Man this year because I'm releasing the freaking video game, man. But this is a little more important. Thanks, man. F. All right, we're releasing. We're doing F. Let's F it. <laughs> F it up in here, man. We're getting F'd. I gotta have two chat windows. I can't see that chat window. Tommy Killer, what's up, man? Oh, Starcade! Where is the chat? Chat. There, yeah, right. There'll be future Burning Man's. Yeah. How you been, Tommy Killer? Yeah, good, good. Good here, too. Yeah, big day coming up. Totally. I'm excited. I love that one. Is that close? That's exactly how I feel, though. I'm super excited. I'm like, yay! Those are all Fs. Now we need some F sharps. Setting things up, yeah. Oh, you figured out the engine. You're going with Unity, sweet, nice. Um, for anybody else on the stream or following the stream or on YouTube or whatever, Tommy Killer is doing a team game. He's at university right now. He's like doing a cool team game project. And they decided to go with Unity. Cool, man. To be missing next year's as well. You know what I gotta do? I gotta get smarter about when a game is gonna get finished, so that I I can time it so that games get finished so that the release happens like in winter, and then I can just go to Burning Man in the summer and like party and stuff and like go hiking and climb mountains like I like to do in the summer, and then game releases can happen like in the winter. It'll work out really nicely that way. Yeah, you want a Sprite Kit? Nice. Sprite Kit is, from what I hear, it's nice and simple. And I like I like the um, Objective-C language. I never actually use um, Swift, but I, I think it's similar, right? Isn't Objective-C and Swift really similar? Nice. Okay, that's good. I think C-sharp is, is a great language to know. <laughs> when they start having freezing man 
I bet they already have Freezing Man somewhere. Somebody's got a Freezing Man, like, already. There's a lot of mans already. What's the latest man I heard about? Can't remember. Okay, I think we're ready to do this. F sharp. Nice. Oh, that's right. Godot's going to be su supporting other languages. I heard that too. Well, this is crazy. So I got two chat windows open. And one of them is super lagged. Like, I can see your guys' chats coming through. Or pieces of them on my desktop one. But my laptop, or not, I mean my, uh, my iPad is like super delayed. It's frozen. Wait a minute. It's frozen. Oh, it's not frozen. Oh no. Now it's now it's working. Sweet. It's gonna be better with your tutors. I haven't used Kotlin. Re yeah, regular man, boring man, exciting man. I think there actually is a running man. He should become G's. They're G's. I'm getting G'd now. Oh, right. A fraction of the community resources. That's a pretty important thing when you're making a game as a team. And maybe for some people it's their first, you know, real project or something like that. Yeah, Forrest Gump. Is like the king of running man. It is it is a dance move. It is a dance move. The running man, right? How do you do it? You gotta like really like scoot your feet back, but man, my feet are sticky. It's not working for me. I need like Mac Michael Jackson shoes. The last note, the G sharp. G sharp, yeah. Yeah, go to, yeah. I like engines like that where you kind of got to figure out your own solution. So I'm sure there's a lot of other people like that that'll really like get into Godot and help it, you know, create community resources for it. Seems like a rad engine. And it's, it's not, it, like, I've heard it talked about a lot in the game dev scene lately. So that's, that's saying something. And people are aware of it. Lots of people are aware of Godot. And lots of people are kind of, like, pulling for some kind of, you know, purely free open source game engine that's, like, Unity quality. Yeah. Unity is so ubiquitous there are so many things so many good resources these should be g-sharps yeah yeah 3.0 so what are what are the other features of 3.0 what what's the whole concept behind 3.0 is it just that they're adding languages or what Oh yeah, yeah. So what was your what was it about Unity that because doesn't Unity I know has its it like a two D mode? Is that what it is? Like Unreal doesn't even have a two D mode. Yeah, we're 
done. Okay, so now we got all these notes rendered. I mean, ready to be rendered. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so what we need to do is highlight some notes that get rendered, which is that we need this. Oh, I need to rename some of these tracks actually, because this one is an A. That's A low frog. This is C low frog. This is D low frog. This is a high frog. Uh, hi, frog. Oops. Oops. Now the sand, that's a tricky one. Sand has to be rendered. Because you might get, oh, you're going to get every one of the notes, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, sand can be an A. That's fine. Two of you guys. Oh, good, good. You guys tried to prototype things. Nice, I'm glad. Yeah, uh-huh. Awesome, oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys tried that and found out right away. Oh, good move, man. Very good move. Three point oh face uh, the genie name, yeah. C sharp support. Wow, C sharp support is gonna be huge for that. Oh my god. And a revamp 3D engine? Wow. Oh, and the UI is gonna be vector based. That's great. Cool, it'll look good on my laptop then. On like good high DPI displays. Language improvements, misc improvements for 2D. Sweet, that sounds like a really significant update. Okay, I'm giving each one of these tracks a letter, a note to go, whoa, whoa. I hit, I hit command R and it's just running the game. Stop. Right? Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Nice, man. Xcode 9 is getting swift refactoring? What does that mean? Like, I'm imagining that means that it could refactor your Objective C code into Swift. Is that what that means? Uh, okay, Sand is also an A. The Whistle. The Whistle is three. Whistle A. Whistle C. And whistle D. It's like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Couldn't do refractoring. Oh, okay. Wow, you couldn't mass rename. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that these all have letters, it'll be easy to select which ones need to be rendered out for each one. So I need to select all the A's. And we're ready for export now. 
Okay, let's do this. Okay, we're going to need TextMate or something. I can type some stuff. All right, this is level uh, level five. So, L5, melody. Um, this is the first note, so we're going to call that zero. And then... Yeah, and then that's all we need for this. This is the prefix to all of these tracks that are going to get rendered. I've never tried to do this while on a live stream, but let's see how this goes. Wait, just make sure A, 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 A. Looks like I got them all highlighted correctly. Let's render this out. Oh, also the, it needs to be exporting to the right place. Explain you do with the team. Oh yeah, right. They're like, yeah, you get something shipped by December. <laughs> Let's see, you get something shipped by December. Right, so this was totally exporting to the wrong place. Glad I checked that. This needs to go to raw, F mod, assets. Level 5e, save but cancel. All right, now it's got its own, got the right folder. And it shouldn't have um, added anything. Good. Okay, yeah, and and a good thing to do here would be to commit raw songbringer again. Now, we are proper ready. I can go command A. This will take a while, but hopefully it works. A rough functioning prototype, but not a full game. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. You, can, you guys can. You can have a rough functioning prototype in three months. You <laughs> might have a design document. That's actually kind of... Gosh, right? Do you have to do that? Do you have to do a design document? Is that part of your... Part of it? Okay, so yeah, this is, I'm definitely not going to be able to finish rendering all this on today's stream. But this is what has to happen. I have to select all the A's, render all those out for all 12 times. And you're seeing how long one time takes. And then I got to select all the C's, render all those out. And then all the D's, and render all those out. And then render out the drums three different times so that they fit with any key. So there will be a B version, a C version, and a C sharp version of the drums, which makes it work with any key. Wikis to replace design documents. Red say that's a freaking, that's genius. That's a genius, totally, man. I agree. Design documents are rigid. Wikis are flexible. Game development, in my opinion, is mostly a flexible kind of thing if you want to have a creative process and you want to have fun with your game and you want your game to be fun. It's like you got to have that flexibility to be able to change stuff. But then again, if you're working with like a AAA studio or something, they kind of have to have design documents and a bit of rigidity so that they can coordinate freaking two to four hundred people working on a project. You know, a small team, you can have a wiki, but a big team, it's more like you gotta, gotta have that design document. You need to have a business plan too, with the financial forecast and design document, so you need to have like one person almost doing that part. 
or something, you know, it's like, that's a lot of work. Org mode? What's org mode? Hmm, yeah, getting out of date could be an issue. Oh, so they're trying to discover how the process works anyways. There you go. Well, if as long as they're flexible, and that sounds like it could be a, like a winning process. They'll learn a little bit. You'll learn a little bit. All right, it rendered one note already. I'm actually kind of excited to hear this song procedural because it's really melodic. It's like boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. It gets in your head. It's like this. It's got this little melody and it starts getting a little bit more varied and stuff as the song goes. And it's a real catchy almost tune. So to hear this one procedurally choose notes at runtime, this is going to be interesting because then you're going to have a different melody each time almost for each world. But like it's still going to be catchy almost and memorable, I think, because of how because of how the instruments are shaped, you know? Oh, org mode Emacs, that's right. I forgot about that. Why is it so slow? Because I'm streaming as well as rendering audio. So the streaming is eating up 60 or 70% of one CPU, and then the audio is taking up whatever it can after that, so. And also, it's a big-ass file. You see there's 18 different tracks it has to render. Even if those tracks aren't highlighted for soloing, see the blue things on the right are soloed. That means that it's like it's only playing those tracks. Um, so it's playing, what, like 8 out of the 18 tracks at once. But it still has to freaking render all the audio for the other tracks because it could be side-chaining and stuff like that, which means that this the audio in one track could be dependent on another track so it still has to go render them all that's why it's just it just takes so long and there's a lot of massive instruments there too so that emacs mode creates a souped up text files oh yeah right bulleted lists yeah that's right i remember that now Placement Year Enterprise Scholarship. That's cool. Yeah, org mode. I think there's even like, isn't there a Vim-ish, like a Vim thing that's kind of like org mode? I think there is. Red Saint, what do you think, man? Have you have you tried like talking to a professor about getting some kind of program like that? Maybe an experimental program started with you? All right, A sharp is done. It's gonna take forever. Oh, it's painful. Like I almost want to just go eat lunch now. I think I'm gonna throw my I'm gonna throw my burrito in the freaking oven and get it warmed up. I got this burrito waiting for me. I'll be right back. I'm gonna put that in the oven.
Doritos in the oven. Oh, not talking about professors with it? Oh, not really a fan. I hear you. I hear you, Red Saint. Oh, they have high expectations. Dang. You got this, man. You got this. So wait, did you guys have, you guys already have your concept for your game and all that? You must if you're making prototypes, right? The burritos rendering. <laughs> yes, it is. My burritos rendering. It's going to be like 15 minutes till it's done. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to think about that every time I have a burrito, like <laughs> in the future. Or every time I heat up anything in the oven, I'll be like, my nachos are rendering. My sandwich is rendering. This toast is rendering. <laughs> it's burr rendering. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We can all use. We can all use that. We can all think about that, right? Whenever you use something's in the oven, it's rendering. From now on. Where's Mars the power when you need him? He's like he he makes bread. He renders his bread. It takes him all day to render his bread. I wonder how Mars Power is doing. Yeah, so after this I'm going to eat my burrito, probably smoke some weed. And then get back to working on bugs. I'm going to work on some bugs tonight, actually. There's a few little bugs I want to get fixed before release. Um, they're really minor things. Like this one grow back tile just appearing on top of the cliff. Stuff like that. We need, we need a chat reunion of the BC Warriors and all the... The four horsemen, which turned into like six horsemen, which was then like eight horsemen. Right, and you got a solid idea. You're working on getting it all developed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Totally. Did you guys see how... Did you guys see how... Um, they prototyped Ori in the Blind Forest. That's a really good one to look at. If you haven't seen any of that, try and go find, um, shoot, what's the company's name? I forget the name of their company, but um, how they prototyped Ori in the Blind Forest was, I highly recommend doing something like that where you're just prototyping with basically just squares. Gray boxing, I think it's the term actually. There's actually, yeah, there's a term for it. It's called gray boxing. You just take a gray box and use that as your art for your character, you know, and, and use another gray box or something for the level, you know, or whatever. And you just use just squares and super really fast stuff to prototype the feeling of your game quickly. And then, you know, once you've got the prototype working well, then you can add the art and music and all that. kind of doing that random images 
Yes, there you go. Random images on the internet. Harmonica's help render audio more quickly. Yeah, were you timing it? Was it going faster when I was playing harmonica? I think it is. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I watched, there's another great talk from, from the dudes that made the, oh, the guy that did the animation for Ori in the Blind Forest did a GDC talk that's quite good for, you know, especially for animators or people in the kind of, you know, the general process of how to do the animation for something so beautiful as Ori in, Blind, Ori in the Blind Forest. Yeah, a combination of gray boxing and placeholder images, yeah. Nice. Highly encourage that, you know, just get the game feel right. And and what's great about doing that is like you, you your programmers can just get that going quickly while the artists are working on stuff. You know, the artists can even start some of the characters and stuff like that, but not have to have them finished. It's just the prototype really helps. Ori and the Will of the Wisps, really? Did they announce that? Oh, I haven't heard. That's great. Sweet. Spine? Yeah, I heard Spine's great. Oh, right, yeah. What are they making now? The, the Bastion? Um, what is their name? Their company name, anyways. Supergiant. That's Supergiant Games. Yeah, early footage. Sweet. Nice. What kind of game are they making now? What is that that they're working on? Super Giant. Pyre, right. Yeah, what is the word? Huh. Dolphin, the GameCube Wii emulator, yeah. Sweet. Oh, Pyre, that's right, yeah. I forgot what the concept was for Pyre. Oh, that's right, the party-based RPG, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now I remember. Isn't there some unique concepts to this, though? Forget what, what it all was, but looks good. It doesn't have memory to store shaders, really? And you have to program on the fly? Wow. Thomas was alone. I don't know. Wow. Oh, right. The emulator had to do that to create shaders for that kind of stuff. Whoa. That sounds tricky. Right, like sport, like you have a team. Yeah, yeah, it is, it, yeah. Sport is a good word for it. Interpreter 
for those GP those GPU instructions into a, into a shader. I bet that was crazy. But yeah, that's a, that's amazing that they would they could pull something like that off. It's called Uber Shaders, yeah. Wow, and they got it on another thread. Two years? Holy crap. And they didn't even know if it would work? Holy crap. That's crazy. That is dedication. Yeah, right. You know, you know how that works and modern stuff works. Yeah, that's some genius level programming. And and not only is it genius level, it's risky. That was some risky programming, which is freaking commendable. Whoa, smell something. Getting there. My burrito's almost done rendering. Yeah, they sounds like they do have it. It's an amazing team. High level audio emulation. Hmm. I bet that was also similarly tricky. Because audio is also like like that, where there's some really hardware specific stuff that happens sometimes. And then porting that and making that work on today's hardware and today's audio cards and all that stuff. It's probably amazing work. My burrito rendered faster than the audio. <laughs> uh, yeah, wow. Wow, I just noticed this track is 50 minutes long if you count how much, if you count all those procedural things. No wonder it's taking so long. So each little segment's like a good like two and a half minute chunk. That's why with like 18 tracks. Yeah, that explains why this is so slow. But I can just let this keep on rendering while I am consuming the render of my burrito. Oh, my burrito's 
Yes, it's done. Get some food soon too, right? Yeah. Well, that's gonna be it for this stream. I'm about to eat my burrito. I'm gonna stuff it in my face. <laughs> burrito, yeah. Well, thanks for watching everybody. Hope y'all are doing awesome. Um, I'll probably try and stream as much as I can this week. But it's going to be busy as shit, I'll tell you that. So we'll see how many get in. Launch day stream for, for sure. Yeah, I'll definitely do a launch day stream. It's going to have to be a short one though, because I do have a few things already scheduled that day. So, but I will. So yeah, <laughs> now I want a burrito. Yeah, thank you guys, appreciate it. Yeah. So we'll see you all next time. Thank you.